Hi friends, welcome to A Wonderful Sheep. I hope you're safe and well. I hope you've had a wonderful holiday season and are excited for the new year. As a planner addict, I'm always excited to start new notebooks in the new year, so I thought I'd show you some of the planners, journals, and sketchbooks that I plan to be using in 2023. As you can see, there's quite a few of them, so we will start with the Hobonichis. So starting with the Hobonichi books, I have two books you may have seen in my unboxing already. I got the Cousin of Ek, the two book form, and uh, a weekly planner for the first time. And since the weekly started in the end of November, I started experimenting with how I wanted to use it. And I think I'll be using it to record what I eat and also my health and fitness journey. Um, this is way too small for me to use as a functional planner, but I saw this as an example of the ways you could use the Hobonichi Weekly in the little pamphlet that Hobonichi provides. And so there's the left side of the planner has these small indentations that break the day into like thirds. That's how I see it anyway. So you could do breakfast, lunch, and dinner here. And I think the example in the pamphlet also showed they put their like body metrics here, like weight and uh, you know, maybe body fat percentage and then something on this side. I forget what it was, but that's how I plan to use it. I've been sort of loosely keeping track here, you know, having fun with like pasting in some things. If I ordered out, um, you can see what I ate, but uh, having my apple a day for breakfast. So I think I'll do breakfast, lunch, and dinner here. And then this section on the right side of the page also has a demarcation here. So I'll do probably just like my weight, my morning weight, and then write down what exercise or activity I did on this side. And because there's also the year at a glance section in the front, I think this would be a good space to write down, um, either write down my body weight or do just like a cross out a day if I ate clean, clean that day or if I worked out that day or something. You can see the whole year and you can see the progress you made in the year. And then the week, we also has um, this notes section in the back, which I haven't, I don't know what I'll use it for, but I guess some kind of note taking, maybe finally conscientiously like sit down and like really study about nutrition and basic uh, like health knowledge, try to gain that like basic knowledge about how to build muscle, lose fat, lose weight and all that stuff. Um, so yeah, I think that's how I'm going to use my weeks. I've also the monthlies I've just I haven't really used much yet. I just wrote down when I went to Pilates or exercised. Didn't do that great this week, but <laughs> that's what starting a new page and turning over a new leaf is for. So starting in January, I'm planning to do the yoga with Adrian challenge. So hopefully we'll be able to write that down almost every day. And yeah, so this will be health and fitness tracking, recording, and then I'm probably going to use the Hobonichi Kazunavec the same way I used it in 2021, which is just um, daily, right, like pasting in ephemera from that day. I just like to like cut out, you know, labels from things I ate or uh, like, you know, bits of a receipt or cards and stuff and paste them in here. So I have some examples on my Instagram of how I was using that at the end of 2022. I went back and found blank pages in my 2021 journal and I just used it to practice and like play around with uh, daily creative journaling again because I kind of missed that last year. I didn't have like a page a day journal for that. So that's what I'm going to use that for. And I still, I never know what to do with this weekly page because I don't want to I don't need this to like schedule in blocks of time. I don't need that functional aspect. I also don't know if I really want to record what I did at every hour of every, of every day. I don't really think I need that record. Um, so thinking maybe of using this part as like just ignoring the timetable and using it as like a, a grateful, a gratitude journal or like write three things that was that were awesome about that day, something like that, something positive. In this section. Let me know if you use this weekly section of your Cousin of Ek because it, I never really utilized this section in 2021. And you don't have to. I know there's this pressure to like perfectly fill in all the components of the book. Um, at least I feel that pressure, but you really shouldn't. It's perfectly fine to leave them blank. 
and also don't really know what I need the monthly for since I'm all, I already have a monthly section in this book, but we'll see. We can let it evolve. Let me know if what you use this section um, of your Cousin Avec for if you use it as a creative or memory keeping journal. So those are my Hobunichis. Next two are also kind of memory keeping books. This will be my Dear Diary journal. This is a very limited edition release by this like creator influencer I follow, Kyurin Kim, on Instagram and I follow her blog and she produced these books with the with a, in a collaboration with this illustrator, R.O. Blackman, and I saw that she had posted, I think on Instagram or on her blog, that she was um, releasing some of these, so I snapped them up. And it's just a plain hardback, plain paper journal. Pages are a good thickness. So this will be like my Dear Diary journal for at least the start of 2023. Um, this was my Dear Diary journal for the second half of 2022, this year. And obviously it's very private, but I'll kind of just kind of flip through like this so you can see. It's a mixture of writing, doodling, drawing, putting down washi tape samples, what have you. Sort of a catch-all, but this was like my dear diary space. Um, I don't know if there's anything I can show you from it. Okay, here, like, if I got new masking tape, put down some washi tape samples, some, like, internal monologue drawing. So uh, these are some exercises, I think, from E. Hadel on Instagram, Elizabeth Hadel. I was drawing, like, how I feel now and how I'd rather be feeling, inter like, internally, mentally. I was, like, experimenting with doing different a wonderful sheep doodles and drawings. I, I doodled the sheep in here. So that was what how I used my Dear Diary Journal and I liked having that safe space. This is never going to be shown anywhere on social media. And I never like actually end up putting stickers on it. I just put on this uh, Midori cover. Oh sorry, this is a Midori notebook. A5 size. I ended up just like putting in these random clippings from magazines and they would just sort of float around inside this clear cover and I kind of like that but some of my positive messages in it so that was how I used it in 2022 and I think this will be my dear diary for 2023 this is a book that I would like to recommend to anyone who is interested in or enjoys memory keeping. So this is my uh, long-term memory keeping book. It's called Some Lines a Day, the five-year memory book, and it is by the Leuchtstrom 1917 brand. Is that how you pronounce it? That brand you never know how to pronounce. Um, I started this book in 2020, and it's literally Some Lines a Day. So there's five sections in the book since it's a five-year book and you write just a few lines a day about that day and then there's one page per day so um, this is January 1st and it goes all the way to December 31st um, and so I usually write down like what day of the week it was like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday where I was and then a little description sometimes I put in stickers sometimes I draw and <laughs> January 1st common factor was every day I had tteokguk, which is rice cake soup, on the first of the year, which is the tradition, Korean tradition. And most of this is pretty private, but I went through and saw if there's any fun things I could share, and uh, there were, which one of which is, since I became ARMY in 2020 during Dynamite, that whole process of me being a muggle <laughs> to becoming like a fan and like going to concerts and everything is all in this journal. So for example, on August 26th in 2020, I bought my first set of BT21 stickers. Dun dun dun. <laughs> and this dun 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 is like, I am recognizing that I'm be like falling into the fandom. Um, so that was kind of funny to look, see. Now I have lots of things besides BT21 stickers, but that was like my first BTS related merch ever. And then this was funny, October 4th of 2020, I 
joined ARMY, <laughs> meaning I, I bought the ARMY membership because there was going to be the MOTS1 concert soon. So I bought a membership so I could um, buy the concert tickets online for the online concert. But then later, let's see, I looked at November 27th entry and this was also uh, kind of nice to see. Like back in 2020, I was you know, buying BT21 merch for this Secret Santa exchange I was doing. But then in 2021, I actually got to see BTS live for the first time in person at Permission to Dance in LA, which was really exciting. So yeah, uh, I really enjoy this book. I recommend it to anyone who is interested in long form analog memory keeping. Obviously this can be done digitally and there's a lot of like apps and like features on our phone that like bring back memories of like one year ago today, two years ago today, but I just like having it in this book. I like sitting down at the end of the day um, to write just a few lines about that day, try to write down some positive things, but there's also a lot of like angsty, like the lows of life in this book as well, which is fine because it's nice to see, oh yeah, a year ago I was at a, you know, I was not doing so well, but you know, things got better and all that is like reflected in this book. So it is, I mean, I, I'll be honest, like I won't, I can't really show, but a lot of 2021 I didn't write in this book. So I've been sort of backlogging. I'm just going through my phone's photos and um, my other like Dear Diary journals to see what I, I was doing on that day one year ago. But I really enjoy this book. This is one of the journaling habits I started that I really am glad I did and I plan to do for, well, at least the next two years because tomorrow I can fill in January 1st for 2023. You don't have to get this brand's book because this is a little bit pricey. There's also a version from Hobonichi and also Midori as well and there's probably other brands too. Or on, honestly you could just get a notebook that has enough pages and write your own. But yeah, this is my memory keeping five-year book. And last but not least, here is my functional planner for 2023. It is the year task planner from Appointed Company. Here's some of the components of it. It's 12 months. It's got a book cloth cover. It's spiral bound and um, it's from the Appointed Company. Before I delve into this, I'll show you what I've been using for the past couple of years, at least since 2018, 2019. I've been using some version of this kind of book. This is from uh, On Your Mind, um, at Fried Chicken on Instagram, a Korean creator whose dictionary I love. I love a lot of their stuff, but the setup of this is the one I've been using for years, which is like, it's like block style on the left. So you've got a week to a page on the left, and then on the right is a blank page. And I've been using this as my master page. So what I do is I uh, separate it into four quadrants and it's work, home or house or chores, creative and uh, fun stuff. So in the first quadrant is like big work tasks that I need to get done. Write that down. This section is home, household chores, errands, adulting stuff. This bottom quadrant is a wonderful sheep creative things so things I want to make things I need to like edit do upload stuff like that everything that goes on my socials or on this YouTube channel and then this last section is for fun stuff which is like uh, you know going to exhibitions checking out new cafes or pop-up stores um, when I see things on social media I was like oh, I want to check that out I'll write that in this section and so I've been using that system for years um, I haven't blocked out this is kind of the quadrant I mentioned, work, chores, a wonderful sheep, and fun stuff. And I really like this book because you can see the right side of the page is always like, um, there's like a design element to it. So after I use this book at the end of the year, I can use these pages, bits of these pages for scrapbook fodder, for collages and things, because they make really great background pages. Um, but in 2023, I wanted to try something different. So I got the appointed company's year task planner, which I first saw on Furry Little Peach's productivity system video. I'll link that if you're interested in how she has this very, you know, 
comprehensive, th thorough productivity system, and she explains how she uses this planner in it. Okay, so taking a look at the appointed companies, 2023 year task planner. It's got this nice gold embossing on the front and that book cloth cover. I don't normally like spiral bound notebooks because I don't like writing over that edge, um, even if it's folded in half. But I think since this is just going to be for like listing down to do's, I'm not going to be writing too much in it. There's a little yearly calendar in here. And we've got 2023 and 2024 yearly um, year to a page spreads, then a common conversions section. But we've got tabs for all the months. That's kind of nice. This is like a very functional, functional planner. Then January, we've got a page for like a cover page for that month with lines for monthly goals and important dates. And then the basic layout is a monthly calendar with a Sunday start, which I appreciate. I really like, I have to have my monthly calendar start on Sundays. And then go into the weekly spreads and, oops, I see. Oh, interesting. Oh, darn. I didn't realize this started with January, um, with December 26. I could have been using it this week, but, um, Sunday, January 1st. Here, let's go to, so this is, uh, the left side is a week to a page from Monday to Sunday, and Saturday and Sunday are a little bit smaller. Sorry, I got cut off there. This is fine for me, I think, to have Saturday and Sunday a little bit smaller. Try to do most of my work work stuff during the work day, but just a weekly spread on the left, and then the right side is like the master page. So you've got priorities at the top, and then a checklist of tasks and then a note section and how I'll be using it similar to how I've been using my functional planners in the past is um, brainstorm all the tasks that I need to do that week and then I draw from the task list every day like every morning and pull over to my daily page so you could like sit down on a Sunday evening or Monday morning write down your priorities for the day brainstorm all the tasks you need to do for those priorities and then maybe throughout the week take some notes or use this space however you need for extra writing but um, I like that this has a priority section and I think I'm going to be using this specifically for yeah I don't know if it's going to be specifically only for creative stuff all the creative things I want to do or mix it with um, like money making work stuff and creative stuff but I like that it has this priority section so you have like the vision, the larger goal of why you're doing all these busy tasks is for this priority. And then I also like that this cover page has a goal section. So I think what I want to implement in my next year's productivity and planning system is to keep larger goals in mind and try to keep doing tasks you know, towards that larger goal, which sounds kind of obvious, but I think I just tend to just use a planner as like a checklist of things I have to do without keeping in mind or really like making sure that I'm working, even if by a little bit, towards larger life goals. Um, I get lost in just like getting the tasks done. And like, there's so many things like little busy work, little day-to-day -day things that we always need to get done. But I think having this priority section and then the monthly goals page in the front will help me stay on track and focused on, you know, the bigger picture of what I want, which I need to <laughs> define and, and verbalize with some reflecting. Yeah, so this is the basic gist of the functional planner. There's 12 months of that, I think, fairly simple layout and then Yeah, that's about it. It looks like the um, the last page of the weekly spread is just a lined page before the start of the next month. So you could use this for additional notes. Um, and yeah, I'm excited about using this planner. I really love Sean over at Furry Little Peach. So like, I want to have what you have. So I got this planner. And then bonus, not a journal or a planner, but 
I thought I'd show the sketchbooks I have, what I've been using in this year a little bit, and what I want to break into next year. They look the same, but they're not. This one is the Moleskin. Hard to see. I forget. It, it came in a three pack, so it's like the A4 size Moleskin maybe drawing notebook. Um, I just got it at the bookstore. I think I saw Nina Cosford use this kind of sketchbook at one point. But now she has her own line of sketchbooks. But it's pretty thin paper. It's kind of cream colored paper. But I use this for just like fun doodling and idea brainstorming. Like what do, what do I have here? When I was doing more BTS drawings. Pak <laughs> Jimin. Just like fun little quirky doodles, drawings. This is Toady from... Lee Ellickson's Instagram and the John Julian exhibition. Love that exhibition. But yeah, um, that's how I've been using it. I mostly only use pencil in here since the pages are really thin. So I'll keep in this, keep using this sketchbook for like doodles and sort of non-finished work. Like this is not really stuff that's going to be finished work, but rather just to like get ideas down on paper. But then this is the render no show sketchbook i'll link the official the specific brand below but this is the sketchbook that fran nerd fran nerd uses for her ugly sketchbook i right, got cut off again and it's no show because i used a sharpie on it and it doesn't bleed through so this is like you can use sharpies in it and on both sides of the paper and it doesn't show through so and it flies pretty flat it's not like 100% 108 degrees flat, but it's flat enough. So I've been afraid to use it because it's like a nicer, more expensive sketchbook for me. And like the paper is nice and thick. But uh, for anything uh, that's ink drawing or ink related, Sharpies, fountain pens, I think I'm going to use in this render no-show sketchbook. But yeah, here are all the players I will be starting 2023 with. I'm pretty excited. Are you excited, fellow planner journaling addicts out there? Let me know what notebooks or planners you're going to be using. And I will try to share and document more of how I use these and maybe some flip throughs and stuff in my channel uh, throughout the year. And also, since it is, this is going to be either the last ch video of 2022 or the first video of 2023, I just wanted to say thank you everyone who's been with me for this past year. Thank you for watching, interacting with me. I really appreciate you all and I'm really excited to have you along in 2023. Leave a like if you're also excited about breaking into your new planner or journal for 2023. Leave a comment about what planners you're going to be using or leave a comment about what kind of content you'd like to see from me in 2023. I'd love to hear from you. I hope you all stay safe and well, and I will see you next time. Bye.